All right. Jane, awesome. Claire, can you hear me? <coughs> All right, ladies, let's get straight into it. There'll be a few more people jumping on in a couple of, uh, in the next couple of minutes. So how to stop yo-yo dieting. I was, before I put this webinar together, I thought, what do I want people to take away from this? What do I want people to, to take away from it? Do I want them to uh, understand the concept or do, do I kind of want them to understand in, in more depth? Essentially, what I've come to, uh, come to realize is with nutrition and with body composition is for me is incredibly simple. So if I was to gain five or 10 kilos or try and lose five or 10 kilos or try and get stronger, whatever it may be, for me, uh, it's just incredibly simple because I know why I'm getting results and I know why I'm not getting results. I understand why people yo-yo diet. I understand why people uh, regain the weight. So for me, it's just an incredibly simple process. And that's essentially what I want everyone to take away from this webinar. It's just an overview on exactly how everything works, you know, why we regain the weight, why we lose it. So then what can happen is we can start making better decisions. Now, going through now, uh, seeing a bit of context. Now, this is why I've learned from speaking slash learning from some of the world's best in body composition. You know, literally trying to find the best of the best who have... Uh, you know, decades upon decades of experience in working with body composition, working with different people. Now, again, seeing the context, you know, for those that are on this webinar or watching, uh, some of you may be teachers, you may be in payroll, you may be a doctor. Um, for those of you, you may uh, coach your daughter's netball team. To get to that stage, it's kind, it's kind of like your art form. It's something which you've probably learned from a whole lot of people. And that's exactly kind of where I am, and that's why I'm passing on. In terms of uh, what I work in, I work in body composition, but it's very much females. You know, we've we've worked with over 2,000 ladies in the past 24 months, whether that be in online programs, whether that, that be at uh, the studio, uh, wherever. It's been 2,000 people. So by working with 2,000 people, you start to see trends. Uh, you start to realize what gets people results and what doesn't get people results. And the final bit of context is studying those that do well and those that don't. For me, um, I absolutely love uh, analyzing those that do incredibly well with anything and those that uh, just don't seem to get the result thereafter. You know, anyone that walks into the studio or does an online program or I speak to in general, you know, someone who's doing maybe uh, a different diet and I'm just speaking to them, I'm trying to work out are they doing well or are they not doing well? If they are doing well, what's making them do well? What's making them be so su successful? And you know, if they're not successful with you know their weight loss, whatever it may be, what patterns are they showing? What habits? And then what you can start to see is you can start to see trends. You can start to see these are the people that do well and this is why they do well. And those that don't do well is because they're doing this or because they're not doing this. Now, what we're going to be covering in this webinar, really simply, why people yo-yo diet, including the number one mistake I see. We're going to go uh, quite sciencey with it as well, just so we can understand exactly why people yo-yo diet. How to prevent yo-yo dieting after reaching your goal. This is hugely important. This is something which, um, to be honest, is probably the missing ingredient with most people when they get the uh, get the results they're after. Awesome. Okay, cool, Karen. I'll answer that question uh, in a tick. So, how to prevent your dieting after reaching your goal? Because what happens is, and this is what I'm going to run through in more detail uh, in not too long, is when you reach the result you're after, your metabolism is far slower than when you first started. So, if you go back to eating how you were before, you're going to regain the weight two or three times as quickly. And you may have experienced this where it takes two months to maybe lose six or seven kilos. And then you put the six or seven kilos back on a space of three or four weeks. And you know, this is what we're going to be running through a bit more. Now, the most effective way to lose weight and keep it off. Now, this is, again, from working with over 2,000 ladies in the past 24 months. The most effective way to lose the weight and, more importantly, keep it off. Because we've, uh, at, at the studio over the past 24 months, uh, we've exper experimented with different ways in terms of nutrition, different ways in terms of training, uh, really trying to see 
<coughs> uh, really trying to see what exactly uh, works and what doesn't. And you know, we've done some things, especially at the start when we first um, launched the studio. We did some things that, based on science, they should work. They should help people reach their goal. They should help people keep it sustainable, uh, the, the weight loss sustainable. But after actually doing it, it wasn't practical. It wasn't getting people the result they were after. So I'm going to cover that as well. Now, why people yo-yo diet, I've broken it down to these key things. Exclusive mindset, not sustainable, metabolic adaption, adaption and lack of knowledge. Now, the exclusive mindset and not sustainable, uh, that's something, uh, they're very similar and I'm going to run through them now. Metabolic adaption is something we're going to run through more in depth. So most of this webinar is going to be focused around metabolic adaption because metabolic adaption you've probably heard of, but you've probably be, probably be, been passed on uh, possible uh, misinformation um, and you probably don't quite understand how it uh, essentially works. And the reason being is metabolic adaption with nutrition, uh, with lots of health sciences is there's very much a situation, it's funny, they know that something occurs, but sometimes they don't know why it occurs. And that's something with metabolic adaption. It's very much been over the past, you know, 10, 20 years. They know that your metabolism adapts and it slows down. But until very much recently, they haven't exactly realized why it happens and how to reverse it. So that's what we're going to be running through probably in more detail. And lack of knowledge. I'm not really going to touch on lack of knowledge because lack of knowledge is, um, if, if I run through that, I'm just talking about people not understanding exclusive mindset, sustainability, and metabolic adaption. Cool. So exclusive mindset. Now, what is an exclusive mindset? Exclusive mindset uh, is when someone focuses on excluding foods rather than including foods. So what this may be is, for example, um, and everyone, everyone who's watching this would have experienced it, I've experienced it as well, is we might be trying to lose a couple of kilos, we might be trying to get fitter, and we say, all right, for the next uh, six weeks or eight weeks, I'm not eating this food, I'm not eating this food, I'm not eating this food. And that's the approach we take. Rather, an inclusive, mi uh, an inclusive mindset is, I'm going to keep chocolate and ice cream and these foods in my eating program, I'm just going to be uh, have them in moderation, but I'm also going to include uh, my greens. I'm also going to include leaner cuts of meat. I'm also going to include this and that. Now, the exclusive mindset causes a bad relationship with food because what starts to happen is when we're excluding chocolate, ice cream, and these other foods, we start to believe and we start to think that these are bad foods. And if we eat them, we're going to have an adverse effect and it's bad for us. And what happens is, is if someone told you, uh, what's a good example? If someone told you that um, there was a lot, of, a lot of BMWs driving around, or someone, if, wait, if I told you to not think of a horse right now, there's probably a good chance you're thinking of a horse right now. Because whenever someone says, don't do this or don't do that, uh, we tend to focus on it. So it creates a horrible relation relationship with food. We tend to focus on it more. And, you know, more importantly is when we're feeling down, you know, when maybe something's happened at work or when it's the weekend, whatever it may be, is we tend to binge on what we call bad foods. You know, for some people, uh, some people punish themselves with food, foods, some people celebrate with foods, um, others um, just by excluding foods it's going to cause them to binge more. So uh, what I found is by having an inclusive mindset, the chances of you uh, binging on the weekends, the chances of you eating, you know, binging on foods when you've had a bad day or binging on foods you know, when you've had a good day are reduced by tenfold. Now cause deficiencies, this is an interesting one. Most people think of clean eating. Now, when I talk about clean eating, I'm talking about, uh, you know, chicken, broccoli, non-processed non foods, essentially. Um, clean eating is really what most people go for when they're trying to lose the weight or when they're trying to get in a fitness routine, wherever it may be. Now, clean eating has been shown to cause deficiencies when it comes to vitamins and minerals. Um, you know, it's um, they 
they've taken some studies done on bodybuilders in the 80s and 90s, uh, and very much the bodybuilders in the past 10 years will be um, exactly the same, because bodybuilders bring clean eating into modern society, the idea of broccoli, uh, broccoli chicken, and so on. Now, it was shown that bodybuilders were extremely deficient in iron, uh, deficient in uh, zinc as well, off the top of my head, and there was about four or five other vitamins and minerals that they were uh, deficient in. And the problem is, uh, with the exclusive mindset, when you're cutting foods out, you're cutting meats out, um, or certain types of meats, or you're cutting other things out, what it tends to do is, because you're cutting uh, these foods out, you tend to miss out on vitamins and minerals that you, you uh, need. Whereas if you take the inclusive mindset, you're going to add you know, your red meat in because uh, you want to increase your iron. You're going to add this in, add this in. Inclusive mindset, uh, or the exclusive mindset, is going to cause deficiencies with vitamins and minerals. Remember with nutrition, there's body composition in terms of gaining weight, losing weight. And there's general health. They're two separate things. You can have one without the other. You can have a six-pack and be incredibly unhealthy. Vice versa, you could be healthy and still wanting to lose 10 kilos. So uh, what we've got to remember is uh, with the nutritional approach we take, we want to be healthy as well. We want to be healthy. We want to have more energy. There's also been uh, you know recent studies uh, talking about zinc. I'll just use zinc as an example because uh, it's an extremity. There was a group of people who were heavily deficient in zinc, and they were supplemented with zinc for three months and zinc six months. And over the space of six months, with being su supplemented with zinc, their basal metabolic rate, the metabolism, increased by 562 calories per day, which is huge numbers. 562 is huge. So what can happen is vitamins and minerals. Remember, they are more for our general health, although. They can play a huge role in body composition. There's uh, the nutritional pyramid that I'm going to do a webinar on in the next week. Um, and I'll run through where micronutrients are. But we don't want deficiencies uh, with vitamins and minerals. And struggle to keep on track during events. If you do an exclusive mindset, I'm not eating chocolate, I'm not eating ice cream. For example, it was Aaron's birthday um, on Tuesday. Now, if I had a exclusive mindset, because at the moment I'm trying to cut down body fat, so if I had an exclusive mindset, I wouldn't have been able to have uh, the cake, her birthday cake. I wouldn't have been able to have uh, the tacos that we had for dinner because they were quite a fatty cut of meat. Because I had an inclusive mindset, I knew that I was going to have those foods and I just fit it into my macronutrients for the day. You know, I fit the, uh, the fatty cut, cut off mince as well. But what I did was I realized that, okay, I'm having these foods. I also want to get my vitamins and minerals. So being inclusive, I included some more greens and some more fiber and things like that and mainly tried to hit my protein goals. So that's the difference between the inclusive and exclusive mindset. Uh, very rarely will someone who has the exclusive mindset reach the goal they're after. If they do, they will hate it every step of the way. So inclusive mindset is possibly the number one change that you can make today uh, with your nutrition that's going to stop you from yo-yo dieting. Because remember, if you have an exclusive mindset, it's not sustainable. And that's what we're going through right now, not sustainable. Can you exclude these foods for the rest of your life? Can you ex exclude chocolate? Can you exclude ice cream? Can you exclude fatty cuts of meat for the rest of your life? Can you exclude um, you know, pork chops or something like that? No, it's not going to happen. You know, there's probably 1% of the population that can, and if that's you, if you're the person that can cut all these things out um, and it be sustainable, then rock that and do that. But if you're not, the key thing is I see people sometimes lie to themselves saying, hey, you know, I can eat broccoli, chicken, and rice every meal for the rest of my life. And then two weeks later, they're binging on all these foods that they've excluded. You know, so just kind of uh, be extremely self-aware of where you're at. You know, 99% of people that are watching this, you're not going to be excluded. You're not going to be able to exclude these foods. So it won't be sustainable, which means you'll have the weight regain. Can you eat really low calorie for the rest of your life? Again, this is uh, based around uh, diet choices. If you're eating extremely low calorie, uh, you're going to have a huge amount of metabolic adaption which essentially is going to mean that you need to eat low amount of calories for the rest of your life, otherwise you're going to regain the weight. And that's going to make more sense because we're going through metabolic adaption right now. Uh, metabolic adaption 
I'm happy to spend as much time as possible. And this here, metabolic adaption, when you understand what it is and the impact that it plays, it just changes how you look at food. It changes how you look at dieting down. It changes how you look at um, when weight loss stalls. And it just changes how you look at uh, uh, regaining or not regaining the weight. So bear with me with uh, this graph here. So on the left here, you should be able to see uh, 3,200, 3,000. This is the calories. This is the calories on the, uh, what is it, Y axis. Over here is the different stage. So this is pretty much time. This is pre-diet, losing weight, stalling, regain. So this is essentially what most people uh, go through. So the blue line here is the calorie intake. So the calories that we're consuming. So whether that be through meats or whatever it may be. Uh, the orange line here is total calorie burn. So this is a mixture of our metabolism. This is a mixture of the exercise that we're doing and things like that. So blue is pretty much calories in. Orange is calories out. So as you can see, see here, pre-diet, the calories in is higher than the calories out. So this person here has probably been gaining a little bit of weight. If they've you know, continued on eating 3,000 calories per day, they've probably been gaining weight very slowly for whatever period of time. Now, as you can see here, they've started to reduce their calories. And if we look here, they go from 3,000 down to about 2,500 calories uh, where they're trying to lose the weight. So they, they've dropped their calories by about 500. Now, this here, which is their metabolism, is slowly coming down, as you can see. Now, they're still doing the same amount of exercise as before in this graph. They're still uh, doing the same amount of walking and other things like that. Um, but what you can see is it's slowly going down, which means their basal metabolic rate and their NEAT is reducing. Now, what's NEAT? NEAT, N-E-A-T. NEAT is essentially non-exercise exercise. So NEAT, and I'll just touch on this quickly, um, very much when I first started looking at um, training, nutrition, body composition, um, and when I really started getting into it, NEAT wasn't even a thing then. You know, NEAT um, was just part of exercise. Now, what they've started to realize is NEAT, which is non-exercise exercise, which is things like walking, is things like chewing gum. Um, they, they've they realized only in the past, you know, maybe, geez, it's only become huge in the past year or so. They've started to realize that NEAT plays a huge role in body composition. They've, they've shown that NEAT can account for 200 to 1,000 calories per day, which is huge. There's been some other studies showing that uh, NEAT reduces uh, faster in females um, and that the amount of uh, reduction in NEAT can be genetic as well. Now, I'm going to touch on NEAT very quickly just because I've <laughs> entered into this conversation. I can't leave it there. Neat is things like chewing gum, is things like walking around, it's things like picking things up off of the floor. You know, it doesn't, you don't burn a huge amount of calories doing it, but it adds up. Neat can also be things like muscle spasms. You know, you probably have muscle spasms without you knowing, you know, your muscles contracting, uh, twitching. You know, you've probably, you can all probably remember um, the, the kid at school that has, you know, uh, can't, can't, uh, control his attention and is you know fidgeting around moving around he's he's just burning a huge amount of calories now what's been shown is the fidgeting and the muscle contraction that just happens when you reduce your calories um the spontaneous movements start to reduce as well so that's part of metabolic adaption so moving back onto this as you can see the your calories have been reduced so you've reduced your calories trying to lose weight and your metabolism slowly coming down, but because your calories in is lower than your calories out, you're losing weight. So see this area here? This area here is essentially um, fat loss. So the fat loss is pretty high here. It's slowly dwindling because your metabolism is slowing a bit, slowly dwindling, slowly dwindling, and then you get to this point here. So this may be three or four kilos that have been lost at the moment, three or four kilos. Now, let's even say, let's even say that um, this person has reached their goal weight. So this person's reached their goal weight. They're just trying to lose three or four kilos. They've reached their goal weight here. Their metabolism and the amount of food they're consuming is equal. So because they're equal through here, 
their weight's going to stay the same. Now this person decides, so let's say this person's name is uh, Ashley. Ashley decides, um, you know, I've reached my goal weight. I'm then, I'm now going to uh, increase my calories. So she increases her calories up to here. Her metabolism still there. Now we see this area here. This area here is weight gain because her calories in is far higher than her calories out. So she's regaining the weight. So if we continue this graph on, you'd probably find that over time her calories um, in would reach back up to here where it was before. But her metabolism is going to take far, far, far longer to actually come up and meet that, which means she'll be gaining maybe half a kilo to a kilo a week. And what happens is, is she gets back to the point where her metabolism has gone back to where it was here, over there, but she's actually maybe gained five or six kilos. So she lost three or four kilos here. She plateaued. She increased her eating, and her metabolism's been too slow to catch up. So she's gained five, five or six kilos, which means she's probably two kilos heavier than when she was back here. Now, let's look at this graph again. Let's say, for example, this lady's name is Ali, and Ali wants to lose 20 kilos. Now, Ali's lost three or four kilos here. She's hit a plateau. Now, she's hit a plateau. What she wants to do now is she wants to reduce her calories in again. So let's say this blue line, which is her calories in, how much she's eating, she drops down to, uh, let's drop it down to 2,000. She drops it down to 2,000 just here. Now her metabolism, this line here, is going to slowly dip, dip down again. So what happens is, is she's losing the weight here, she's losing the weight, she's probably lost another 3 or 4 kilos, but what, what's happened is her metabolism slowed down, so she's now at a plateau here. Now... What I found is when people reduce their calories far too quickly, they get to a point where they can't reduce their calories much more and they've plateaued. So, for example, let's just say Ali, who we're just talking about, she reduces her calories to 1,000 per day. Her metabolism is going to slow down to 1,000 calories per day. Once it hits that mark and they're equal, she's now plateauing at 1,000 calories per day, which means... Technically, she should be losing weight, but because her metabolism has uh, slowed down, she can't, uh, she won't lose any weight. So she now has uh, two options, either to reduce her calories even more, um, just say she reduces them to 600 per day, real starvation uh, calories, her metabolism will slow again. Now, the second option is she can increase her, um, she can increase her calories. You know, she may get to the point where, hey, I, I'm annoyed, I'm not losing weight, so I'm going to increase my calories. If she increases the calories back from 1,000 where it was, maybe to 2,000 where it started off, she's going to gain the weight three to four times as quick because she's in a huge calorie surplus. Now, there was a lot to take in just there in terms of metabolic adaption. Metabolic adaption could be a two-hour webinar just in itself. But essentially, the key points are is when you reduce your calories in, so the calories you take in through food or liquid, when you reduce that, your metabolism is going to slow. It just happens. Now, are there ways to uh, avoid this? Um, not, not quite avoid it, but there are ways to slow it down. Now, what slows it down? It could be genetics. Some people are just in incredibly genetically gifted where their metabolism doesn't slow as fast. Other people... Uh, their metabolism slows really quickly. So that's the first thing. The second thing is muscle mass. Now, if you're losing lean muscle mass, so if you're losing five kilos, but two kilos of that is muscle, which can come down to not eating enough protein and not doing resistance training, your metabolism is going to slow down even quicker. And the opposite is correct as well. If you're eating your protein during resistance training, your lean muscle mass, you should maintain most of it which means that your metabolism should slow, uh, slow, uh, should slow down slower uh, than the other way. Um, things as well such as your protein intake. Protein is, quite a, is, is a thermogenic. So if you move, for example, from a high-carb eating program to a high-protein, your metabolism will slow um, at a slower rate as well. Now... The same works on the opposite. Actually, I'll touch on that in a second. 
Can everyone post up in the uh, chat or questions if you have any more questions on metabolic adaption? I've skimmed over. I can't go too much deeper into it uh, just purely because it, it'd be a two-hour um, conversation. But is there anything I've skimmed over too much? Essentially, what happens is, is when you reduce your calories, your metabolism is going to slow again. So when you hit that plateau, it's because your metabolism has uh, met your calorie allowance. Now, strategically, you shouldn't be reducing your, ca your calories too quickly. If you reduce it too quickly, so I'll quickly go through another example. If you reduced it from here down to there straight away, your metabolism would drop like that really quickly. Now, the opposite. If you reduce your calories from here to there, your metabolism will slowly drop. If you then reduce it from there to there, it would slowly drop. There to there, it would slowly drop. So the way we want to approach weight loss uh, from a sustainable point of view is we want to reduce your calories slowly. So you need to be eating as many calories as possible while losing weight. I'll repeat that. You need to be eating as many calories as possible while still losing weight. If you drop it far too quickly, then you're going to have that metabolic adaption. Now, again, genetically, some people, some people may be, to lose weight, may need to eat 1,200 calories. Some people may need to eat, eat 1,800 calories to lose weight. It's all on an individual basis. Um, you know, some people can eat higher. It's just, it's based on genetics. It's based on weight. It's based on muscle mass. It's based on past history. If you've been dieting for a long time, then your metabolism is going to be far, far uh, slower. Uh, just quickly jump into the questions. So, uh, Karen, what if you can't lose any more weight unless you reduce your calories? Now, there's a couple, uh, couple of approaches. Um, the first approach is, is you need to analyze how many calories you're consuming at the moment. Now, if you're still consuming a fair amount of calories at the moment and you've plateaued on that, then you uh you can you can reduce your calories. You reduce your calories and that should kickstart you out of the plateau. Um, after this, Karen, make contact with me and we'll sort out uh, reducing your calories so we can re-kickstart that. But the first approach is, and there is two approaches, first approach is you reduce your calories um, even more. Now, when you're getting to extremely low calories, like when you're getting to like 1,200 to 1,000 and around that, you might get to the point where you don't want to reduce it anymore. So the second approach is reverse dieting. Now, reverse dieting, I'm going to touch on in a second. Reverse dieting, if, you, if you're getting to the point where, and especially for those that are trying to lose a bit more, if you're getting to the point where you're consuming 1,000 calories and nothing's shifting, then reverse dieting is probably the healthiest option. You don't want to reduce your calories under 1,000. You know, personally... I don't like to reduce calories under your basal metabolic rate. Now, some people, we've got to look at this um, from a psychological point of view. Some people, if just say, for example, you've lost 20 kilos and you want to lose two more kilos. If I told you that you had two options, you had to eat 900 calories uh, per day for four weeks and you'd lose those two kilos, or we we're going to reverse diet you for eight weeks, and then we, um, when your metabolism was up, up, we then reduce your calories. Um, you know, psychologically, if you've lost like 20 kilos, and you know, um, I'll actually touch on this because um, because Michelle's in the conversation and she won't mind me talking about this. Michelle's um, done incredibly well. She's lost um, a lot of weight, and she's getting closer and closer to her goal. Now, with Michelle, the biggest thing is we've got to analyze someone's personality. And what's going to be realistic as well? So, if, uh, for example, uh, with Michelle, is you know she's getting very close to her goal. If I told her we're going to have to reverse diet you for twelve weeks, which means you eat more food each week for twelve weeks, and you won't lose any weight, and then we can re-diet um, for another couple of weeks so you can lose that weight. You know, lots of people, especially when you've done that you know, when you've done maybe three months, six months, or 12 months of losing the weight, you just want to lose that last bit. You don't want to wait another three months to lose those last kilos. So 
it, it's, it's very much when you get to the lower calories, um, it is, is, a, is a choice based on personality and it's a choice based on what's going to get them to their goal. Because lots of people, if they've lost 20 kilos or so and they want to lose a couple more kilos, they won't want to reverse diet for three or four months so they can lose the remaining couple of kilos. They'd rather just go very low calorie for a couple of weeks and then reverse diet out. So hopefully that answers your question a bit, Karen. Um, again, I, I think where you're at is um, we've, we've got a lot of calories to play around with. So we'll uh, reduce your calories and we'll play around with your carbohydrates and maybe increase your fats. All right, moving on to the next point. How to prevent yo-yo dieting. Really simple, inclusive mindset. Create a program you can follow for life. Reduce calories slowly but effectively and reverse diet. Inclusive mindset, we've touched on exclusive. You need to have an inclusive mindset. If you have an exclusive mindset, you need to change it now. You need to have an inclusive mindset. Chocolate, ice cream, your favorite foods, you need to be still consuming them, but you just need to make sure that they fit in your proteins, carbs, and fats. Now, a good example, is I'll touch on um, Michelle again for, for an example, is Michelle's quite low calorie now, which means that having things like chocolate and ice cream is... It, if she's really careful with her portion, she can do it. But there's also that dilemma of if you add things like uh, chocolate and ice cream in and you're extremely low calorie, you might become a bit nutrient deficient. So very much with the situation Michelle's in is an inclusive mindset, but it's inclusive of getting our vitamins and minerals in and then whatever's left over um, can be a uh, chocolate and ice cream or something, but inclusive mindset, so vital, so vital. Make sure you're having your favorite foods. You shouldn't even realize you're dieting. If you realize you're dieting or or it even comes, uh, or, or if it's even a thought, then you're doing it wrong. You should be eating the foods you like, but you should just be including foods that are going to help get you towards your goal. Create a program you can follow for life. Again, has to be sustainable. Reduce calories slowly but effectively. As I touched on before uh, with metabolic adaption, is if just say, for example, your metabolic rate is 2,000 calories, that means if you have less than that, you're going to lose weight. Now, if you dropped your eating down to 1,000 calories per day, you're going to lose a lot of weight to start off with. But your metabolism is going to drop from 2,000 calories per day down to a thousand really, really, really quickly. And now you're at a thousand calories per day. You can't lose any weight, so you're going to need to drop it down again. And then your metabolism is going to slow. So you might only be able to lose maybe six, seven, or eight kilos that way. Now, if you take your uh, metabolic rate that's at 2,000 and you consume maybe 1,600 calories per day, plus you're doing the right exercise program um, to burn those extra calories. You're probably going to lose maybe you know four or five kilos before your metabolism slows. Once it slows, you might reduce your calories by 150, just 150. I've I found that 150 uh, kickstarts it again, mainly from fats and carbs. You might lose another four to five, then you might reduce it by another 150. You might lose another four or five. So at this stage, the person's lost 15 kilos and they've only reduced their calories to what 1300 as opposed to the other person that reduced it to a thousand and only lost four or five um, effectively so we want to reduce them slowly but in an effective manner we don't want to reduce them too slowly we want to reduce our macronutrients our proteins carbs and fats we want to reduce our carbs and fats mainly but we've also got to remember that if you weigh 100 kilos you're going to need to consume more protein than if you were 80 kilos so along the way as well um, and again, I'm going. I, I'm trying to give an overview. I don't want to go too deep into this because they could be separate webinars each. But when you start to lose weight, you don't need as much protein in your eating plan as well. You don't need to have as much protein. And reverse diet. The most I, I see as the most important thing to prevent yo-yo dieting, and we're going to touch on that now. I believe is the most important thing. Now, if we look back at this again. Let's say, for example, this lady here, um, she's reduced her calories. She's gone to this point. Let's just say, for example, she's reached her goal weight. She's now happy where she is, um, and she just wants to maintain that. So her metabolism is at around 2,500 per day. Now, 
This is what we want. We want you to reach the goal that you're after. We want you to get to where you're happy. And then we want to have your metabolism as high as possible. We want to get your metabolism as high as possible because here's the question for everyone that's watching. If your metabolism was 3,000 calories per day and you needed to consume 3,000, you need to consume more than 3,000 calories each day to gain weight, would you ever have trouble with weight gain again? So going through a question again, if your metabolism was 3,000 calories per day and you needed to consume more than 3,000 calories each day consistently to gain weight, would you have a problem with gaining weight again? You wouldn't. 3,000 calories is a heap. You wouldn't consistently be able to eat more than that. So what happens is, is once you reach your goal, we want you to increase your metabolism so high where you just never have to struggle with uh, losing weight um, again. You never have to go through that. Now, you probably know someone, you probably have a friend who has quite a high metabolism. Could be for a million different reasons. But your friend can go on holiday, they can have a, a wine, a cocktail, they can have whatever, and they just don't seem to gain the weight. That's where we want to get you to. Now, there's things like genetics, that a few different things play into it, but essentially, if we reverse diet, we can get you to the point where your metabolism is so high that you just are going to struggle to regain the weight. As opposed to if you don't reverse diet, you are nearly 100% guaranteed to regain the weight. As I went through just before, I went through just before exactly how if you increase your calories too fast, you gain the weight. Now, reverse dieting is, it, it can get quite complex. Now, with macronutrients, with body composition, is 80% science, 20% art. 80% science, 20% art. Reason for that is I'll quickly run through, I won't name who the client is, but uh, there's a client that we've had and she's just, she's so committed to the training. She uh, works incredibly hard. Uh, she's always in. She's tracking her macronutrients. And over the past, uh, probably been past four or five weeks, um, she just hasn't lost a kilo. Hasn't lost a kilo. And based on all the numbers, based on her weight, based on everything, she should be losing about one to one and a half kilos each week. Now, in the past two weeks, we managed to get her to lose over a kilo, and hopefully she's 100% on track now. Now, the reason I share that is, again, if we look at just from a sciencey point of view, she should have been losing the weight. She should have been losing, you know, eight, nine kilos in the space of the five weeks, or, you know, six or seven. But she didn't lose anything. Now, she was very uh, carb-resistant. What that means is she, her body just can't deal with carbs uh, like most of us can. So what that meant is I need to play around with her fats and her carbs and play around with them quite a bit. So the one thing I changed was her fats and carbs. I changed the ratios of that and that kicked her weight loss uh, back into gear. And you'll, you'll find that she should be consistently dropping now. And that was just purely from playing around uh, with that. Now the reason I share that is, you know, we're going to go briefly into reverse dieting, but understand it can get quite complex and everyone's an individual. 80, you know, 80% 80 of you um, can uh, do one way and for it to work, the other 20% it needs to be played around with. But essentially, if this person here, instead of taking the calories from 2,500 to 2,700, um, if they maybe took it from 2,500 to 2,600, what you'd find is you'd find that they would gain no weight and their metabolism is going to come up to reach that. So what happens is if you slowly increase your calories each week, your metabolism slowly increases each and every week. Now, over the space of 10 weeks, let's say if over 10 weeks we increase this lady's um, eating her calories by 100 calories per week. So each week we increased it by 100, so we took it from uh, 24, 2,500 to 2,600 to 2,700, 2,800, so on. If we did that for 10 weeks, you'd probably find she'd gain maybe 200 grams or 300 grams or something really, really small, next to nothing. She wouldn't gain anything. But in 10 weeks' time, her metabolism might be well over 3,000, which means, okay, she's gained 200 grams, which, let's be honest, is nothing, um, 
but in the end, she's got her metabolism so high that she's just going to struggle uh, to regain the weight. Now, this here is uh, the secret sauce. This here is secret sauce to uh, not yo-yo dieting again. Coming out of weight loss is nearly more important than the actual weight loss. If uh, There's lots of competitors. If anyone follows uh, bikini competitors or physique or bodybuilders or anything like that, it's incredibly common. They drop 10, 15 kilos in 12 weeks, and then after their competition, they gain like 10 or 15 kilos in the space of a month. It's huge because that's this on an extreme level. So what you need to be thinking about is you need to be, be thinking about when I reach my goal, Firstly, I want to be eating as many calories as possible. But secondly, how am I going to reverse diet out in such a way where I don't regain the weight and I have my calories as high as possible? Now, what I found to be the perfect approach in nutrition. Now, again, with this webinar, we're going over, you know, maybe a, maybe a level or two deep into exactly, um, you know, why people yo-yo diet how to stop it, and just getting an understanding. All I want is for you to have an understanding of the principles in play, understanding of why we do, understanding of why people don't, understanding of what you can effectively do so you don't uh, regain it. Um, and that's all I want you to take from this webinar. Now, what I found to be the perfect approach to nutrition, again, we, we've tried things, especially at the start, at the studio, that you know scientifically should have been a, a good approach but practically, it just doesn't work. You know, what I'm going to take you through right now is essentially what we take people through when they do a 28-day program or whatever it may be, um, and it just works. It works because we, we've we worked with 2,000 people um, in the past two years, and we know what works and what doesn't. So understand how many calories your body is, is expending each day. Now, if, if you don't know what your calories out, how many calories your body is expending, then you can't work out what deficit you need to be in. Now, this number here can have a fair amount of error. This here can have, have a fair amount of error. The only way to get a true estimate of your basal metabolic rate and other things like that would cost a lot of money, like I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars. But what can happen is, firstly, is we can estimate pretty accurately. For 80 to 90% of people, we can estimate pretty accurately. Then the other, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20%, we can, uh, if you've worked with enough people, you can start to see, based on past history, uh, genetics, where they're holding body fat and other things, where the variable may, variable may be and how much to change it. So... Understanding how many calories your body is expending each day, which is based on your met, uh, basal metabolic rate, how many calories your body needs uh, to ex uh, how many calories your body needs for uh, your body to function essentially, how many calories you burn through exercise, how many calories you burn through NEAT, N E A T, non exercise exercise from fidgeting, chewing gum, stuff like that, and then uh, the thermo thermodynamic effect of food. So, for example, when you digest food. Um, that burns calories. If you uh, consume 1,000 calories from protein, you're going to burn between 200 to 300 calories digesting that protein. That's why we also recommend high amounts of protein. It keeps your, uh, keeps your metabolic rate nice and high. So the first thing is you want to understand how many calories. So if you're watching this, how many calories does your body uh, expend each and every day? So you have that as your benchmark. You then want to put yourself in a calorie deficit of 1,000 calories each day. If you do that, again, this is for weight loss. If you're trying to lose a kilo a week or one and a half kilos a week, then a 1,000 calorie deficit um, each day is going to do that. So do I recommend you reducing the calories that you consume by 1,000? No, because some of you, your metabolic rate might be around 1,600, which means that you'd be consuming 600 calories per day, which is nothing. We don't want that. What we want to do is we want to increase your metabolic rate, which may be through extra exercise. So if you're not doing full resistance training, and I mean proper resistance training, where you're lifting uh, weights under tension, you're lifting fairly heavy weights. If you're not doing that, that's the first thing. Um, and then the second thing is, you know, are you increasing your NEAT, which again, non-exercise activity? Are you walking places? Are you fairly active just um, throughout the day? 
So I recommend a 500 calorie deficit in terms of eating. So you eat 500 calories less and you try to increase your daily expenditure by 500 calories. If you do that, it's normally highly effective. Create your perfect macro split. Now, once you've got, with the nutritional pyramid, you've got uh, calories in, calories out, which is at the bottom. You've then got your macro split. So this is the second most important thing when it comes to body composition, when it comes to nutrition. So creating your perfect macro split. If anyone hasn't read uh, one of my recent articles around uh, protein, carbs, and fats and how to work it out, uh, send me through a message and I'll send you through the link. Uh, I'll send you through the link to the article. But essentially, what you want to do is you want to base it on your weight. You want to see how much protein should I be consuming, how much fats should I be consuming, and then how much carbohydrates. Now, again, as I mentioned about the client before, we set up their macro split, but it wasn't correct for them. It had to be more individualized, and the only way we found that was from monitoring, tracking, and reviewing the process. So for you, you may be carb uh, resistant. Uh, if, if you're carb resistant, then that means that you may have to have high amounts of fat. Or you might not, which means you can have more carbs. Again, this is a variable. This is where the art form of body composition comes in. But what I recommend is a good starting point for anyone is 40-30-30. 40% protein, 30% carbs, 30% fats. If you do that, you're going to get a good gauge um, of where you should be at. So what I do is you want to work at how many calories you're expending, you want to put yourself in a calorie deficit. So you may decide, hey, I'm consuming 1,600 calories per day. That's got me in a deficit, plus I'm increasing my exercise. I'm then going to a 40-30-30 split with my macronutrients. Now, this is just a starting point. Again, remember how this was a huge variable, how it could, have, could be high, could be lower uh, due to different things. All we want to do is we want to get a starting point. So with everyone that does our programs, I give them a starting point and then I review in a week and in two weeks' time. So if after a week they've uh, lost a heap of weight and two weeks they've lost a heap of weight, then I'm like, okay, that's where they need to be. Now, if the, if after one week they haven't lost weight, um, I make them wait another week. And then after two weeks, you need to give it 14 days at least. If after two weeks they haven't lost weight, then I go, okay, we need to reduce the calories even more because this number up here from the expenditure was a little bit out. So it's making it adjustments, is setting a starting point, analyzing what happens, and then tracking from there. So for example, Karen, is you had your starting point and you didn't lose. So what that means is... Uh, we need to reduce your calories because that will be your new starting point. And then from there, we track uh, the result. And um, if, if, again, it plateaus, then there's been more of a reduction and so on from there. But with this and with nutrition, it's constantly monitoring, constantly tracking. Have I got adherence first thing? If you're not hitting your macronutrients, then you can't change anything because you uh, there's so many different variables. You need to be hitting your macronutrients consistently or consistently close. If you're doing that, then every two weeks I'd be tracking. Am I on track to my goal? No. Have I had high levels of adherence? Yes. Then I probably need to reduce my calories, reduce my carbs or fats. And again, all the ladies doing our programs, I, I will help you with that and the team will help you with that. Create an effective training program. If your training is ineffective, then um, it's going to be a slower process. What that means, again, if you haven't read um, one of my articles, um, the first part, um, which is talking about calorie expenditure, um, then message me through. I'll send it through. But it talks about the difference between an effective training program and ineffective. You know, the effective training program had the lady losing uh burning uh burning calories 48 hours after high amount whereas the ineffective had someone burning calories for i think it was like an hour if that after so the training program has to be effective again the biggest thing with exercise is sometimes we think with training programs and workouts is just putting exercises to get exercises together it's not Training programs, for example, exercise physiologists, exercise physiologists, they go to university for three, and if they're doing a um, a master's or if they're doing honours or if they're doing um, a doctorate, 
they're there for another, you know, year or two. These people study for that long so they can understand effective training programs. So, you know, the reason why I share that is sometimes we think uh, to get results with body composition, it's just lifting a weight or whatever it may be. It's all about how long you're lifting the weight for, how much tension you're putting on the muscles, how you're putting the exercise together. There's a lot more into it when it comes to um, effective training programs. But, you know, if that's a an area which you're not quite hitting, then maybe that's something to look into just because um, effect, if, if the pr training program is ineffective, then that means that you, you tend to need to reduce your calories even more um, because you're not burning as many uh, through the metabolic effect. Now, eat your favorite food every single day. Uh, really simply, um, if, you're, if you're eating ice cream or chocolate, whatever you enjoy, if you're eating that every single day, you're not going to have those binge weeks. You're not going to have those binge days. You're not going to binge on the weekend. You're not going to feel deprived. That's something which is huge for me. I've, I started doing not too long ago with my own uh, eating program. It's something that I, I believe everyone should be doing. You should be eating your favorite food every single day so you don't realize that you're dieting. If you realize you're dieting, you're probably doing it wrong. Create a positive relationship with food. You know, how often do we, uh, I know I felt this, I'm sure many of you have felt this, when you've eaten the food and you feel bad after the food, you actually feel not, you feel angry at yourself. You feel upset that you've done this to yourself. You feel upset that you've ruined your diet or something like that. I'm sure you felt this. Um, and it's a negative relationship with food because let's be honest, um, if you have, you know, there's been so many studies showing people eating McDonald's, eating, you know, Twinkies, eating KFC and losing weight. Again, the reason I share this is because there is no good or bad foods. There's just some foods have more nutrients in them. We've just got to make the, the foods fit in our, uh, our proteins, our carbs and our fats. Now, uh, again, so slowly lowering carbs or fats, sometimes protein. When weight loss stalls for two weeks or more, then you need to lower your calories. Um, if it's just one week, you need to wait. You need, to, you need to see two weeks worth of data. You need to slowly lower your carbs or fats. Again, if you're losing quite a bit of weight, you may need to reduce your protein a bit because it's just uh, not, not as necessary. But again, uh, it's just from working with um, people uh, and you know being in the trenches that you know whether you need to lower someone's carbs or fats. I can't really say which one. All I can say is, again, there's an article that you can read about it, so they'll go through in more in depth, but if your fats are too low, it can have adverse effects. Fats and proteins are vital uh, for your life. They are vital. Carbohydrates are just an energy source. Now, does that mean we should cut out carbohydrates completely or just carbohydrates? No. But if we cut our fats too low, we can start to have uh, you know, indecisiveness, uh, we can start to struggle just in terms of uh, focusing on things. There's so many positives when it comes to uh, the mental effects of fat. So we want to slowly lower our carbs or fats. I'd recommend um, if your fats are under 40 grams per day, then you lower your carbohydrates. Again, it's something that has to be done on an individual basis. Now, once you've reached your goal, you want to reverse diet as high as possible. You want to be eating as many calories as you possibly can um, and still maintaining your weight. Again, imagine if you had to eat 3,200 calories to lose weight, um, to gain weight, sorry, 3,200 calories to gain weight. You just want to have a problem with, um, with uh, gain, weight gain again. You'd be able to maintain incredibly simple. You'd be able to go on holiday. You'd be able to... You do whatever you want. You'd be able to have a wine on the weekend or a couple of wines or a wine each day, whatever it may be, and keep your body composition uh, where it is. So the key thing is uh, once you've reached your goal, effectively reverse diet as high as you possibly can. Reverse diet as high as you possibly can. This, for me, is the number one thing. The number one thing you can do so you don't know your diet is reverse diet as high as possible. Now, that's the that's most of the webinar, ladies. Um, I've gone through again. I've tried to go through a layer uh, deeper than surface level. Most of these things, like metabolic adaptation, would be a two-hour webinar in itself. You know, reverse dieting, two-hour webinar in itself. Uh, macronutrients. Again, if you haven't read any of the articles that I spoke about, message me and I can send them through to you so you can get more information. 
But what I'll be doing is um, I need to secure the date, but next week around you know, 7 p.m., I'm going to be doing another webinar. And this webinar is around creating your perfect eating program. It's around creating a uh, perfect eating program. I'm going to go through each layer and we're going to create it together. We're literally going to go through and you're going to work out your base of metabolic rate. You're going to work out this, this, and that. And we're going to work out together. Now, for those of you, there's quite a few ladies who are at the studio. For those of you, I've, I've probably set it out for you. I've told you what to have. Um, go off those numbers. But it's still handy you going through the process because you know, what I want is I want to educate people, help them have more knowledge. So, you know, if you decide to go off and do it um, by yourself or, you know, if, if you go over state, because uh, that's the only reason you'd leave the studio, right, um, <laughs> that, you, that you know exactly what you need to do. So um, you never have to have problems with weight gain or you never have to not know um, or you never not know exactly what you need to do. All right, so that's enough for me. Thank you um, for spending an hour at 7 o'clock at night. Um, listening to me. Again, I'll pass through the details of the next webinar. I hope to have you on. It's going to be a couple levels deeper. It's going to be very interactive of you actually going through the process with me. I'll be taking you through it, holding your hand through it. Um, any questions, remember to uh, send me uh, send, send some questions through. I'm about to have dinner, so I may be a bit late with answering the questions, but thanks for being on.